In this video, we will demonstrate how to place a cervical collar on a supine patient. A cervical collar is used when a cervical spine injury is suspected. If you have a patient with a suspected cervical spine injury that is in the supine position, two healthcare providers will be needed to place the cervical collar. In the pre-hospital setting, a cervical collar would be placed prior to the transfer of the patient to the hospital. To begin the placement of the cervical collar, both healthcare providers should apply proper personal protective equipment. Following the application of personal protective equipment, the first provider will position themselves behind the patient, stabilizing the head and neck with their hands. This provider will be responsible for head and neck stabilization throughout placement of the cervical collar. The second provider will select the correct size of cervical collar to be placed on the patient. There are several different sizes that can be used and it's important to select the proper size for your patient. In addition to fixed size collars, adjustable collars are also available. To determine the correct size for your patient, the provider should kneel at the patient's side and measure on the lateral side of the neck between the jawline and the collarbone with the fingers. The provider will then select a suitably sized fixed collar or modify an adjustable collar to the appropriate size. Next, the provider will slide the back of the cervical collar under the patient's neck. They should then align the chin piece with the patient's chin. Once the cervical collar is in the correct place with the chin piece aligned, secure the collar using the Velcro strap. It is important to perform an assessment of the patient's airway status after placement of the cervical collar. The collar should not be obstructing the airway or causing the patient to have a difficult time breathing. If the collar is found to be obstructing the patient's airway, or if the patient is having difficulty breathing due to the collar's placement, the provider should adjust the collar and reassess. It is important the chin piece of the cervical collar is not hyperextending the neck. If this has occurred, the cervical collar is too big for the patient. The provider who is maintaining head and neck stabilization will do so until the patient is fully immobilized. Providing full spinal immobilization is currently the recommended practice for all trauma patients with a suspected cervical spine injury. The use of long spine boards and other spinal immobilization devices will vary between organizations. The healthcare provider should always be aware of state protocols and their organization's policies and procedures.